Clarkson was literally catapulted to fame by being the winner of the inaugural American Idol TV show in 2002. In the show, Kelly sang her way from being one of 10,000 contestants to being one of 30 finalists to eventually being the outright winner. Over 100 million TV viewers loved her for it, engrossed by the rags to riches story, the girl from Texas, a sweetheart from the heartland, of whom the notorious talent judge Simon Cowell was heard to remark, there's no question about it, you are the best singer on the show. Critics who predicted that such TV manufactured fame would evaporate have all quickly been proven wrong. Her debut album, Thankful, sold over 3 million copies worldwide, and her latest, Breakaway, has already exceeded 5 million sales. It's a heartwarming story for a girl who was literally working as a waitress when she met you and whose pre-teen career ambitions had been to be a marine biologist, an idea she abandoned after having seen the movie Jaws. I came from a very musical family, but nobody really plays instruments or, like, you know, sings, you know, professionally or anything, but they were always listening to music, everyone. And I'm the youngest, so obviously, you know, I just had all these different musical influences from my brother and sister and parents. I actually grew up dancing, like, from when I could walk. I was a dancer, loved being on stage, loved performing, and didn't even know I could sing until I was 13. Um, you know, I guess because you don't really know what you sound like. Um, you know, still to this day, I'm like, well, why do people like me? But that's cool. So, but, um, you know, I think it's more, you know, I, I didn't, I never sang in front of anyone, so... A teacher heard me singing in a hallway, uh, Miss Cindy Glenn, heard me singing in the hallway and said, hey, want to be in choir? And I was like, no. <laughs> and, and then I found out I could sing. So from the moment I found out I could sing, I literally dropped everything else going on in my life. <laughs> I was 13. I, it was my first solo um, whenever I knew that I was going to make a career out of this. I I was on stage and I'd never really sang a solo before. I wasn't nervous at all. I think just because I'd been on stage before, you know, dancing and stuff. But I don't know. I went, I went on stage. I sang Vision of Love, Mariah Carey. And um, I people, the people's reaction, like, I just like, was like so thrown back. I was like, am I actually that good? Like, I, people were just, you know, left and right coming up, and then I started singing in church, and people were just like, you know what, God has given you this gift, You're, it's inspiring, and da-da-da, you need to, you know, run with this, and I just knew I was supposed to sing, so. Began to, you know, learn um, classical stuff, I did a lot of, you know, more opera-style stuff, just because that's what they teach you when you're in choir, you know, so you can blend, you know, when you, when you know how to sing classical music, it broadens your whole you know, um, range of like music. Like I can sing country or R&B or um, rock or anything just because of that experience, um, you know, that I've had. And it's kind of like basic training, you know, for a vocalist, so. After school, Kelly tried her luck in LA, where she found herself working for the famous songwriter, Jerry Goffin. The big breaks weren't coming, however, and with Goffin falling ill and her apartment destroyed in a fire, a return home became inevitable. I had actually full scholarships right after um, high school to go to great music colleges or other colleges, whatever I wanted to really do, just because of singing and um, everything that I'd accomplished in high school. But I didn't go. I didn't use any of them. I knew that, like, if I something inside of me like really wanted to move to LA, I really wanted to try it on my own. Um, I just, I don't know. I just had a feeling. So um, I, you know, packed up everything after high school and moved to LA and worked. You know, I got you know backup vocalist jobs, worked with bands and clubs, and you know worked with writers. I did everything you know that you normally do coming up the ladder, and um, I was doing great. And then um, my apartment burned down, so <laughs> I didn't have a place. To live. <laughs> so um, I was like, I, I remember I lived in my car for like three days, just slept in my car and finished out some studio work that I was doing. And then I, I had to drive home because I was like, well, I have to shower. <laughs> and then on my way home, I, it's God works in mysterious ways. He, he had a friend tell me about some audition and I was like, okay, cool. I'll go audition. And it ended up being American Idol. So Back home, Kelly felt revitalized. She found solid work to pay the bills, but the dream of singing persisted. Then one day, a friend told her about a new television show, American Idol. The funny thing about American Idol, um, the first season, um, was that we had never heard of Pop Idol. We had never heard of any show like that. So, I mean, we thought, whatever, this is going to not turn out to be anything. This is a joke. But maybe, you know, since they say, you know, you're going to be on live national, national television and you're going to be able to sing what you want and showcase yourself in a way that you want, you know, it was just too good of a chance. It was too good of an opportunity to be able to showcase yourself to millions of people nationwide. And, um, you know, you knew people would tune 
tune in to see something live, and you knew they'd tune in to see all the bad people that you heard in the auditions. <laughs> so, you know, I, it was just too good of an opportunity. Um, we all knew that it wasn't going to really amount to anything. You know, we were like, you know, whatever. Maybe we just want hope for a manager or a record executive or somebody to see us and be like, wow, that, you know, I could work with that. So, um, you know, whenever the competition actually blew up, we didn't know what to do with it, you know, it was just like, wow, okay, so people really like this, and it just became this own, uh, this own thing that nobody would ever, you know, just uh, this phenomenal thing that everybody kind of got, kind of sucked into. The only part that was grueling, I mean, obviously, I love, I love, you know, auditioning, um, I'm weird, I love singing, obviously, but auditioning is just, it's just a challenge for me, and I love it, so, you know, with each, you know, audition, um, even to get to the live taping, you know, the live shows, um, it was, it was fun for me, so, I loved it, the only part that started getting hard was when the show did blow up, and 40 million people were watching it, you had to do all that press and promotion to cover that. And the States is a pretty big place. <laughs> so you're doing, you know, photo shoots and interviews and TV and rehearsing and everything from literally 4 a.m. to like 12 a.m. the next morning. So we got no sleep. When it was the top three, we didn't want to win. None of us wanted to win because we, we weren't sure, you know, like what that meant. We, I mean, we were like, okay, so we win. Does that mean like we're going to have to like give our first child and, you know, totally have to make a record we don't want to? You know, we were, we were all pretty fearful of what was going to happen if you did win. So we were all pretty much like, okay, we want to make it to the top two, but we don't want to win. So how do we do that? So um, it was actually funny that we were all kind of like, I hope you win. And we were like, <laughs> so we didn't. So, um, but you know, then it, you know, whenever I did win, I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna, I was, I was very fearful of like what that meant, you know, like how many people were gonna try and, cause I had already, I had already lived in LA and I had already, you know, been in contact with people that totally try and steamroll over you and package you and make you something you're not. And I was not gonna do that. So, you know, um, I just took it as a sign from God that, you know, I already had these millions of fans and, and had this opportunity, a giant door into the industry. And, you know, I just told people, look, I'm not coming out with a record that I don't want to do. I want to ride on it. I want to, you know, be a part of every part of the record, be very involved. And, and um, you know, I just kind of let people know what I wanted to do. Here's the thing.